guys, my name is John Hughes. I'm the school resource officer here at the middle school in ECFE, and I get to work with you guys on a daily basis. I want to talk to you a little bit about my uniform here. I wear a bulletproof vest, outer carrier vest, and there's two different kind of materials in it. There's a softer material that sounds kind of like this, and then there's a harder material that's a plate that's right here in the center of my chest. You'll hear the difference. So the, the softer part is like this, and then the harder part is right here. The harder part's about this big, and it's supposed to protect my, what's really important on me uh, from right here on my chest. Um, I have a, a badge here, and the differences between my badge and my patch is my patch says St. Peter Police Department right here on it, and it's a light blue color. And my badge here says my badge number on it. My badge number is 1917 or 1917. Then my name here on the front, John Hughes. I have a radio here on the front. And do you think I call and order like pizza and things like that on my radio? No, I don't. What I do is I talk to my dispatcher, I talk to other police officers or other agencies and I get to talk with them about what kind of call I'm on or if they need help or anything like that. Next I have a flashlight and the flashlight has two modes. It might be a little bit difficult to see outside here, but there's one mode that's just a regular light like this. And then there's another mode that's a strobe light, and that comes really handy when we have dance parties at the police department late at night. Next, I have a recorder, and it's just pretty much an audio recorder conversation or an interview that I'm having with someone else. For two sets of handcuffs, and the reason why I wear two sets of handcuffs is I might accidentally lose a pair, or I might fall out, or if there's a bigger guy or, or girl, I would wear two. They would put on two sets of handcuffs in case just for one. Next I have my taser here on the front. Here, this is what's called my baton. And it's pretty small like this, but it opens up to about this big if I were to open it up. And the best part about that is I'm able to scratch myself late at night. <laughs> and then also I have my pepper spray here in the front. I wear a collar uniform like this. And I think that a lot of people think that it's black, but it's actually a very dark navy blue color uniform. That pretty much makes up my uniform. Our squad car says St. Peter Police on the side. I've turned on the lights here. They have red and blue lights. As you can see, we have a light bar on the top. We have lights on the sides here. And some lights in the front of the car as well. I'll turn the siren on just real quick just to show you what it sounds like. <laughs> so that's what the siren looks, looks or sounds like. Inside of the squad car, I'll show you real quick. We have a computer. And what I use the computer for is I talk to my di different uh, my partners or I get calls that are sent to me. So I can find out where, what the location or the address is. We have a, a video screen here, which records the video of the squad in front of the squad car. I have a radio that I can talk to my dispatchers on. I use that right here. Then my lights. I turn on my lights with this little switch right here in the front. And then the recording starts. We also have a printer in the back here to print out tickets. And then in the, we have a back seat in case we need to drive anyone anywhere. In the back of the trunk, we have cones in case we ever need to tell someone to move over for us or to not enter a certain area, we have cones for that. We also have a medical bag. That's actually, that we have a medical bag in here that has oxygen, and in case you ever have any problems or any like uh, an, an owie or anything like that, we have bandages um, and other uh, things to help with that. We have a fire extinguisher in here. We have a blanket. And right here is one of my favorite parts about it is we have these two lights here, and I'll show you what they look like in case our trunk is ever open. So 
So it's just another set of lights. If you guys ever happen to see a squad car like this with their lights on, just make sure you don't come up to us and just let, let us be. And then we'll, if, if you, we can come up to you after the stop if that's what we wanna do, okay? If you ever hear a siren and you're on your bike or you're rollerblading or anything like that, make sure that you wait for the siren to pass. Never go towards the siren or the street because usually it means we have to be somewhere really quick. So we wanna make sure that you are safe as long as, long as we are as well when we're driving. So if you hear a siren, make sure you understand where the siren's coming from and make sure you stay on the sidewalk and make sure that happens until we pass. Okay, so that pretty much is my squad car. Officer Hughes, do you think preschoolers should know their full name? Yes, they should, yep. Why would that be helpful? It'd be helpful in case you ever got maybe separated from your parents or you needed to tell someone your full name uh, in case uh, that would help to get reunited with your family. Good idea. Do you think preschoolers should know where they live, what their address is? Yes, there's another reason in case you get separated or you know you need to find your way home, knowing your address would be a really good thing uh, for you. Do you think preschoolers should be able to call on the telephone if they need help? Same thing exactly, yeah. Be able to call and learn your mom or dad or brother or sister or grandma or grandpa's cell phone number or phone number to call in case you need them. Okay, so do you think that, that preschoolers should know the number to call for emergency? I think they should as well, yep. What number is that? That number is 911, and it's very important to use that only when it is an emergency. An emergency is something that you can't control yourself, or your mother or father or brother or sister can't control and need either a law enforcement, a police officer, or an ambulance, or a fire department member from the, the community to respond. Okay, that sounds great. I have a question about preschoolers separating from their parents. Let's say we went to the store and we wanted to hide from our mom and dad. Can you tell us a little bit about that? That would be a bad idea. I have children young as well, and I've taught them that if they hide from us, that a parent could try to look for the ch child or children and then get further separated from you. So that's not a very fun game to play and it's not being safe and making good decisions. If they were to get lost, what do you think is a good idea for a preschool person to do? I think it would be a really good idea to find a staff member that works at that store and make sure you remain calm and you come up and you say, I need, to help, need help finding my mom or dad or brother or sister. Sounds like a good idea. Um, with daylight savings time this past week and it sure gets dark early, do you think the preschoolers need to worry about playing in the dark? That is something that you have to be careful for, yes. You should uh, really only be inside when it gets dark outside. And, and now that it's earlier now, just make sure that you uh, get all the your ants out of your pants before it gets dark and then go on inside where it's a little bit safer and you don't have to worry about getting lost in the dark. Okay, let's talk a little bit about bicycles. I know it's so nice we can still ride our bicycles. Is there anything you should tell the kids about riding a bike? Definitely always wear a helmet. Make sure that the helmet fits, that your mom or dad or brother or sister, make sure that it fits on you and that it is snapped and buckled. Always also make sure you uh, cross the road with an adult or a brother or sister and just make sure that you, uh, you know, uh, remain safe while you're on your bike. Okay, great. There's one last thing I'm going to ask you today. Can you tell us, do you think we should still be wearing a car seat? Absolutely. Yep. Those are laws that are meant to, they're mostly newer laws, even from when I was a child and those are meant to keep you safe. I know it's not fun, but in case you were ever in some type of an accident, it's gonna keep you safe with your seatbelt on and really make sure that you don't get hurt. Okay, if a mom and dad have questions about their, their seat belt or their car seat, can they come down to the police station and make sure they have it installed correctly? Absolutely. Uh, our CSO, our community service officer, Janet, 
works directly with uh, the installation and making sure that car seats are installed properly. So she is a great resource down at the police department. You can call the phone number 507-931-1550 to schedule an appointment. Sounds great. Well, I know how important it is to have a police officer in our community and in our school. And I think everybody needs to know that you are there to help us and the kids should not be afraid of you, but know that they can come to if they need help. Absolutely, I appreciate you saying that. Uh, I really think that when you see me around, I just want you to know that I'm not here just to arrest someone or that something is wrong or in someone's in trouble, that I'm here is that I'm a resource for you and someone you can look to for help. And that's even here in the, in the school and even if you see me at the, in the community anywhere. Okay, well thanks so much for your time today, Officer Hughes. We yeah. sure appreciate My it. My pleasure.